Okay, guys, this is it. I know you're like, okay, you're going to do another corn dog joke. Okay, here it is. I'm going to pray for parking is what I'm going to do. Okay, check this out. It's called the, uh, this is the, uh, my, this is a church I like to do corn dog. I like, like this is where I like to come, come to the river and pray. Look at that. Now, seriously, listen to this. There's a person walking by. I'm going to kind of give her some privacy. I just believe churches are sacred spaces, so I'm going to let somebody walk past. They're like, I don't want to be on the Fibonacci travelogue YouTube thinking you're funny. I'm, and I'm certainly not going to go do your fucking corn dog. Okay, here we go. Holla. Okay, that's it. It's called the Mary Star of the Sea Catholic Church. Um... Schedule of devotions. Anyway, this is where I like to go. It's in San Diego. It's one of my favorite places to go. Um, I like it because um, you know, and, I, and, and this is—I won't tell the corn dog story every time, but you know, you never know when someone's going to kind of uh, move into this channel, and kind of meet it. What is a corn dog prayer? You got to admit the devil has a name. I think that's where spirituality begins. When you go, you know what? You may not believe in Jesus. You may not believe in the Christ, but you got to believe in the devil, dude. So I go to this church and pray, and I call them corn dogs. You're like corn dogs? What the fuck? Where are you from? Anyway, uh, my driver's license says Colorado. I'll always be a Coloradoan in my heart, dude. Durango. That's where things changed. That's where I'm like, okay. And I'll tell you that it's kind of a hashtag MRA stuff. You know, you know, all stories always start with heartbreak. Anyway, that's how mine started. Well, it started earlier, but I don't want to go into my childhood. Okay, well, now that you've asked, it was so hard. Well, okay, that's corn dog. What is a corn dog? I'm going to turn this off, give people privacy. Other people want to go in there. They're like, I'm going to go in here and pray, and I don't want your fucking corn dog joke on my prayer. But remember, I think churches are sacred. I, I think um, I, I think one of the things with America is we don't have enough sacred spaces. I mean, how many sacred spaces? And that's... You know, for me, I'm starting to take that seriously. Like, um, they're, kind of, they're, they're becoming technology-free places. I mean, just think of the, uh, what if you had one room or one space in your house where you just didn't have technology? Technology was not allowed in that space. Kitchen table, bedroom. In fact, Google, uh, um, they did a study and they said that, they found that, that if you have a television in your, in your bedroom, you have less sex or you have a lower um, enjoyment of sex. So I think there's a relationship between, te- between technology and, and sacred spaces and sex. and Anyway, don't get me on that stuff. I guess what, guys? I got a parking space. Get up the ghost, baby. And guess what? It's a, t- it's a Nissan. I was going to say it's a Tundra, dude. That's what I drive. I got one hour. What is a corn dog? Okay, here it is. Here's my corn dog story. Uh, everybody, anybody who watches this knows that I'm kind of a Jesus and Christian. I call myself a Jesus and because I just identify more with Jesus than I do the Christian culture. So the Christian culture is more Fox News. I'm more of like, I can just, I'm more of like Matthew 4. You know, read the first verse of that. I'm like, okay, well, I agree with that. And the, 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 the Christian culture would never read Matthew 4 verse 1 and really spend a lot of time on it. I'm like, no, that's kind of the cornerstone of a lot of my beliefs now is Matthew 4, 1. I call it the, the Matthew 4 model. Uh, and I may even call it the, uh, the Fibonacci model because I'm just making shit up like corn dog and talk about homelessness and all kinds of things. And this YouTube channel is just me just sharing my shit and trying to be happy and share light and love, maybe some LOLs, maybe, maybe make you think, uh, you know. So um, one day I was in a 12-step meeting, um, and, and the, the 12-step is a sacred program. It's not a perfect program, but it's as... Uh, it means a lot to me. So there was a, a phase in my life that I was in the 12 steps. Um, and, it, it, well, w- I wouldn't say there was a phase. The 12 steps is, is, has, has been in my life for probably eight, nine years. Um, and I, there's been different seasons of my life of different emphasis, you know. Uh, there's some in some seasons where I've gone to a meeting, a meeting every day. And there's been some seasons where I've, I've, I haven't gone to a meeting a year, you know. And... Um, but one time I was in a, uh, I was in a, a 12-step meeting, and one of the beautiful things about these meetings is they're just people sharing their stories, and you hear a lot of bullshit. You hear a lot of uh, unbelievable heartbreak. You hear wisdom. You hear uh, vulnerability. You just, it, for me, it just it changed my life. Being in those rooms changed my life, and 
uh, again, I kind of came into the 12, not from a, a, an addiction issue, um, but just more with like codependent shit. Cause the 12 steps talks about people, places, and things. And a lot of people think of 12 steps as alcohol, but really, if you read it, it talks about that we, we, we struggle in life with people, places, or things. And, you know, alcohol is just one thing. But there's some people who, you know, I know people who are literally addicted to a place, you know. Um, I know some people who are addicted to certain types of people, you know. Um, so people, places, and things, and that's what the literature talks about. But what happens is that the, the, the alcoholics in their, I believe, arrogance and selfishness have, have, uh, have owned the 12 steps or what I call the 12, uh, and they've made it about alcohol. But I, I think anybody can read the, the literature and, and, and be, and live a blessed life. And for example, corn dog, um, you know, I was in a 12 step meeting and this guy, um, he, he just raised his hand and he was as corn dog as they come. He's out there in Lubbock, Texas. And he just looked corn dog. I mean, there's just, there are just corn dog people. And he just kept it simple, made it real. He didn't need one of those metaphorical things. Like he didn't need like that simile analogy. He didn't need the he need Carl, he didn't need, he didn't need Carl Jung. See, I, that's where I go. I go all metaphorical, and I read Carl Jung, and you know whether that's good or bad. But um, he just said, you know, one time he told the grip. He's like, you know, one time I've just decided that I was gonna get on my knees and pray to God for for about ten minutes a day. You know, and this guy was struggling with um, with addiction. And so that prayer was not something that he was saying to be funny, but he he spoke such simplicity to me and to the to the meeting and he goes he goes, you know, I just I've just discovered like if I can get on my knees and pray to God for about ten minutes a day, that everything basically just works itself out. And I just 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 every day just praise God in my knees. You know, for him it was God. For me, I, you know, I'll, you know, I'll get really heady with it. Jesus Christ, there's the Christ, there's Jesus. I'll, be, I'll go Jehovah, Adonai, El Shaddai, Rashim. I mean, I'll. That's how my mind works. And and sometimes you just need to be around corn dog a little bit. He just, you know, I just think you need to get on your knees and just go to the river and pray. Just get on your knees and praise Jesus. So that's what I've been doing. And for some of for, for some other people, corn dog looks like this. You know, that's what that's the way some for some people who are gifted with music, they can just put it with music and it sounds so beautiful. But when corn dog said it, it was just God's mouth in my ears and I just said, you know. Just spend some deliberate technology free time with presence. So I go in there, I'd say my prayers, corn dog style. And I like corn dog because he did say you have, he goes, I just get on my knees and praise God. Just praise God, bring it to God. You know, he even taught, ironically, he even used examples of where he saw that prayer overcome racism in his, um, uh, in his workplace. And he's like, you know, I, I've seen where I, there are people because because West Texas is about as is about as racist as fuck as they come. Like racism in West Texas is like 1950 level. Like you you don't know modern day racism until you've been to places like Lubbock, Texas. Keep Lubbock. In fact, Google Lubbock. Bo- keep Lubbock boring. And Lubbock has literally been voted the most boring uh, city in the um, in the nation. Literally, just Google that. And racism, and he was talking about how his corn dog prayer has kind of been helping racism. And anyway, corn dog prayer. Hope that helps you. Get out there. Go do, go do something. This is what it sounds like, baby. And you know, yesterday, you're like, dude, are you ever gonna like close it? I get it. Corn dog prayer, ten. I and it's not. It's not. We don't have to do ten minutes. It can be practice, not perfection. I get that. You just are trying to encourage us to in- integrate prayer. We just fucking, yeah. But that's not Fibonacci, nigger. Fibonacci likes to give details, details, and we'll tell you again, and we'll play music. See, sometimes corn dog make you make you accept yourself too. I went to that prayer yesterday, 
somebody blessed me and I just been, you know, I think I got a new opportunity coming down the pipe right when I need it one more time. I went to corn dog and said, Lord, thank you. And I did the, you know, sometimes corn dogs, thank you. And then today it's like, you know, I'm going to about to make another change and, you know, Lord, I call him Lord. Exodus 14 says, the Lord is a man of war. Sometimes I need a God that's war, a warrior God. That's why Exodus 14 says, the Lord. So I call him the Lord. That's my new name for God right now. Dude, Lord, dude. Dude, Lord. All right, you guys be good. Email me.